It is Sunday, Minties. That means it's time for another retro view. And due to popular demand, I'm going to be talking about JSA Omnibus. Not just one, not just two, all three of these JSA Omnis. No idea how long I'm going to go, but let's see where this takes us. Now, just a little bit of a warning, when I do these retro reviews, some of these books happen to be out of print, such as the case of JSA Volume 2. It's become rare in the last year. I'm hoping that one day DC ends up reprinting it. So let's look at JSA Omnibus Volume 1, the one that kicked it off here. And this is what the front and the back and of course the spine looks like. Speaking of spines, I figured I'd show it off better this way. Here are all the spines together. And then of course, the backs here. Now, let's do volume one first. So they all look very similar under the dust jacket. They have the JSA logo here and on the spine and then the DC logo back here. Nothing really on the back. They are very, very thick books. For example, this one here has 1,224 pages. Here are all the credits. And it all kicks off with All-Star Comics number one. Um, so the JSA, before I talk about what's included in here, they've been characters that have appeared all the way back from the Golden Age and the Silver Age. As a matter of fact, the very first time we see characters interact other than Barry Allen and Jay Garrick, when they meet each other through different Earths, and that is the JSA, or the Justice Society of America, and the Justice League of America. They had many crossovers during the pre-Crisis on Infinite Earths. But, all of that is kind of confusing because then you think, well, how are these characters still alive? Okay, so really quick, just a little, little, little brief history. It's just, everything has been retconned, right? Since Crisis on Infinite Earths, characters that were originally in Earth 2 are now on our Earth since Crisis on Infinite Earths. So in the 90s, they had their own little mini-series, and then they had their own ongoing series. The ongoing series, I think, got canceled, and characters uh, were kind of aged the way they were supposed to have been, because these characters are all the way from, like I said, the Golden Age. And now some of these characters are back, and they form the Justice Society of America, just calling it JSA, in late 1999. And that's where this series first starts off. It kicks off with that miniseries that I mentioned, the All-Stars, JSA All-Stars. It's an eight-issue miniseries, and then it moves on to the ongoing series. And it is done in a way that, if you're not familiar with these characters... You are reintroduced to these characters or their legacy characters or their sons or daughters that have taken up the mantle. And all of a sudden you feel like, oh, I think I understand these characters more. And really it just takes like the first few chapters, the miniseries, to kind of catch you up to speed. Now this particular volume contains, uh, like I mentioned, the JSA All-Stars 1 through 8, JLA, JSA Virtue and Vice, it's a, just a three-issue miniseries crossover, uh, JSA 1 through 25, that's the ongoing series, Our Worlds at War One-Shot, Secret Files number 1, uh, JSA, JLA, Secret Files, number one, All-Star Comics, one and two, All-American Comics, one, Adventure Comics, one, National Comics, one, those are just the one-shots, uh, Sensational Comics, one, Smash Comics, one, and the Star Spangled Comics, number one. So, who started this? Well, that was the brainchild of James Robinson and David Goyer. Of course, David Goyer went on to do movie scripts. So, Johnny Sorrow, love this character. One of my favorite characters from this run such a badass um as a matter of fact honestly before this book came out the way that it was solicited they didn't even have the first few issues the first six issues of jsa because jeff johns didn't write those you see james robinson left after the first six issues so david goyer even though he was still writing it and co-plotting it was alone so they at first dc was like nah doesn't have jeff johns name on it we'll just uh you know we'll just omit those issues and people through a fit, people like me, and we were heard. So when this was resolicited, they added those first six issues. I mean, how are you going to start a series leaving out the very first six issues? So yeah, James Robinson ended up leaving, and of course, James Robinson. You've heard me talk about the man many times because of Starman. 
Uh, he left after six issues. David Goyer was then joined by this new guy named Jeff Johns. And nothing was ever the same again, at least for me. Let's move on to volume two. Well, actually, before we do, let's see if there's any extras in the back. I don't think they put extras in the back. Okay, they put the trade paperback covers in the back. Before I open this up, one of the books that I strongly suggest buying and reading before you read JSA, or, or at least before you read the seventh issue where Jeff Johns comes in, is JSA Presents Stars and Stripes. These two trades are being collected in the one trade paperback, and it's being resolicited again. It was originally canceled, and now they're bringing it back, mainly because of the TV show Stargirl. I think they're actually calling it Stargirl. So... Yes, I strongly suggest reading these. These are Jeff Johns' first uh, published work at DC, and it features the character of Stargirl, who is, how do I put it, um, it's based on his sister who passed away. And I don't know if he tells it in here, but I remember reading an article about that, and she's getting a TV show. But yes, don't forget to read these. Now, this is the one that's hard to find, and this also happens to be my favorite volume of JSA. So this is my favorite thing that Jeff Johns has ever written was the JSA. And here, let's talk a little bit about this. So this contains JSA 26 through 75, the first annual, uh, the JSA Secret Files and Origins, the second issue of that, and then Hawkman 23 to 25, which is a crossover event. And to me, this volume right here contains the best of the best of what is JSA. Um, so just to show you what they do with the covers, they put the cover up front and then in the back tell you the name of the issue and what's contained in here. And then of course who the pencilers are in this issue. Uh, it doesn't give you an issue number though because well, DC is just notorious for doing that. So what makes JSA so awesome to me? You have, you know, all these old guys that have been around for a long time since the golden age you have jay garrick who's the original flash uh you have alan uh who is now going by sentinel but then he comes back to becoming green lantern again you have carter hall hawkman you have dr fate um you have all these old characters and then you have a new generation of the old characters names like this is the new mr terrific right here right and then you have the new Sandman. Um, you also have the new Hour Man, who's an android. And Dr. Midnight. So it's like all these legacy characters. And then eventually, of course, Starman, but then Stargirl. So what is it about these characters? Oh, God, I forgot about my boy Black Adam joining, too. Um, what is it about these characters that Jeff Johns gets it right? And I will tell you just... This is how I feel about it, that even though I didn't know any of these characters before reading Volume 1 with JSA, even if I had no idea who these characters were, Jeff Johns just has this talent that he makes you nostalgic for something you had no idea about. I'll use this as an example. Uh, there's a character that shows up here, I think it's Hour Man 3, like the third Hour Man, who apparently had shown up many years prior to this. And when he showed up, I remember going like, hell yes, Our Man's back. Who the hell's Our Man? How the hell did Jeff Johns do that? How did he make me feel nostalgic for something I knew nothing about? And it's the way that he writes his stories. It's his, in his dialogue, his powerful dialogue, and his great moments that make up this run. There's powerful moments in here. I've, uh, one of the comic books in here is one of the comics that defined me in my top ten list. And damn... This is the volume that made me a JSA fan. This is, um, I had these in trade paperback and as I was reading them for the first time, because I kind of stopped collecting comics back in the 90s, and I never really got into JSA until it was in trade paperback format, but when I was reading them, I was a fan of all these characters I never thought I would be a fan of. Adam Smasher, Our Man, Black Adam, Captain Marvel, Dr. Midnight, and Jay Garrick. Jay Garrick, Wildcat. Wildcat is a man's man. Wildcat's a dude that you just go out drinking with and just, you know, he has this almost breaking his morality code about him. And it's all due to, yeah, Jeff Johns. Yes, of course, David Goyer was plotting it. But by issue 50, David Goyer was gone. And it just became Jeff Johns after that. And once Jeff Johns took over, 
it was magic in a bottle. I mean, he was teamed up with all these great artists like Don Kramer, Keith Champagne, Steven Sadowski, Buzz, Michael Bear, James Moreno, Darwin Cook, Tim Sell, Howard Chaikin, all these guys that, you know, you hear so often these days. And that's just to name a few. There is a huge lot of talent that went into these books. But for the most part, oh yeah, Michael uh, Lark was in some of these too. But really what it comes down to is powerful characters, emotional moments, and just wonderful storytelling that makes the JSA my favorite work from Jeff Johns. It is perfection. Now let's look at volume three. Here's the final omnibus, volume three. And within these pages, you'll see the most changes in the stories and the characters uh, because something happens within the, um, the pages here. And that is... Um, well, let's talk about what it collects first. So this collects JSA 76 to 87, Justice Society of America 1 through 28, Justice League of America 8 through 10, Justice Society of America Annual Number 1, JSA Kingdom Come Special, the Superman and the Special Magog, and then the Kingdom Special. So, what happens? Well, something called Infinite Crisis happens. It's a Gentleman Ghost, another one of my favorites. And actually, Jeff Johns didn't even get to finish out the series because he was busy writing something else. But it, it's uh, Paul Levitz, I believe, that writes the final few issues. Yeah, Paul Levitz and Rag Morales uh, writes the final few issues of JSA. So what does that mean? So when I said JSA 76 to 87, those are the final issues before Infinite Crisis. And Infinite Crisis happens, and then we have one year later, right, when the characters come back. And that is what Justice Society of America is. So it gets, the title gets renamed and renumbered. So JSA got renamed into Justice Society of America after Infinite Crisis. That's what happened. And this is also Jeff John's last hurrah. He leaves the book as of issue 28. Uh, but not before his huge holy trilogy of final story thy kingdom come which alex ross supplies um as the co-plotter like he's co-plotting the story along with him so it's a return of this kingdom come characters and as a matter of fact alex ross draws the kingdom come special superman and it's actually and actually he writes it himself and it's a damn good story so yes it's this story right here it's great and it's not it's not the final story but it's kind of to me a great send-off for these characters yeah this is it this is the kingdom come superman special it all led up to this and then we have the return of black adam and all these characters like star girl it's just nice to see them and honestly flipping through these pages just makes me want to revisit these books just because i enjoy them so much reading them and i love to do an old reader new reader on them now let's look in the back here for extras okay i was gonna say by now we have variant covers so yeah, Jeff Johns. This is everything that he did. The story of Justice Society of America continued before it was all, of course, well, actually it all got canceled and then rebooted because of New 52. And I don't think these characters even existed in the New 52, which is so strange. Power Girl. How did I forget about the character Power Girl in this? Um, I could go on for hours talking about these characters because they're so damn good. And like I said, it's not that hard to get into. That's a classic scene. It's kind of a retcon. Um, what was it from? the? It's a retcon of Zero Hour. But anyway, it's not that hard to get into at all. You don't have to know prior history of uh, the Justice Society of America to enjoy these stories. I will say one more thing, though. If you do feel like continuing on and reading past the Jeff Johns era, that's where these books come in. This is JSA, or I'm sorry, Justice Society of America, The Bad Seed. It's written by Bill Willingham and Matthew Sturgis, the people that did uh, Fables and Jack of Fables. And then there was another comic book at the same time, JSA All-Stars, written by Matthew Sturgis and drawn by the phenomenal Freddie Williams the second. But I think the second trade of this got canceled. This only went on for a few more trades, but that's it. As far as the binding of the book, it's all sewn binding, and it's it's got a big eye, but it's a pretty big book because of the 
paper quality that it has. So sometimes it has a hard time staying open towards the very beginning, unless you've had a good read through and you've opened them up properly. Now, if you're wanting to purchase some of these books, the ones that are still in print, please don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you Minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the overview of all three of these Omnis. Like I mentioned, Volume 1 and 3 are easily accessible. Volume 2 has becoming harder and harder to find. If I ever get a chance to talk to DC and give them a list of out-of-print books, that is definitely one that I'm pushing for. Let me know if you've read these, if you've never read these. They're also available in trade paperback, but I know you guys all love Omnis as much as I do. And this is also where my JSA ended, because I've tried Earth 2 during the New 52, and honestly, there's just nobody else that can recapture the magic that I found in these books. So. Please uh, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, let me know in the comments what else you would like to see. Don't forget we can be found on Patreon and Redbubble, those are great ways to support the channel if you can do so and all of that information is in the description down below. More importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe, and much love to you all.